y'all. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my newly organized craft room, craft space, office space. And it's my first video of 2022. And I thought, what better way to kick it off? To kick it off by showing you my space. So my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. It's kind of a mess in here and I wasn't cleaning up Normally I would have cleaned up by now, but um, I was kind of holding off cleaning up because I wanted to film it and share it with you guys so you can see real life <laughs> how it is over here at our gray house. Today's video is part of an open challenge playlist and it's called the Craft Organization Challenge. It is hosted by Teresa B. DIY and co-hosted by Happiness Created. A link to both of their channels as well as to the playlist is going to be in the description box below. I sure hope you check it out. For those of you that didn't know, I have a crafting group on Facebook with my friend Sarah from Jujube DIY, and it's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. A link to that's going to be in the description box below. I sure hope you join, and when you do, please post a pic of something that you're working on right now. We'd love to see it. All right, this first face I'm going to be showing you is what I actually see when I'm at my crafting table. So this is my music stand. And one of my intentions for 2022 is to practice my flute more. I'm a flautist. How long have you been playing? I have actually been playing since seventh grade. Wow. So probably, I don't know, 10 years? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's been a while. But, um, and then next to it is just this little stand. I think I got this from Target. And it has on it two signs that two dear friends created for me. And then it has um, photos of Morgan and myself. And on this bottom shelf, this is the, the lowest shelf that I can see when I'm crafting. That is my Air Force shelf. I, my son went to the Air Force in 2008. And at that time, um, there wasn't really a support group. So anyway, I talked to Morgan about it. We created one in 2010. And I've been doing Air Force Wing Moms ever since. So 
you need any help at the airports, <laughs> I'm your girl. So in this area over here, I just have my artificial flowers. I get most of them from Dollar Tree, but some from Hobby Lobby. And then I have this little mirror that I made. And you'll see Kat in the video. Kat is the one filming. She's the one asking questions today. You can follow her on Instagram or YouTube at your gal pal Kat. So, yeah, the link will be in the description box below. There's anyway. a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. And so at the bottom, um, I have my book club books that I'm going to be reading, or at least starting to read in 2022. How many books did you read in 2021, Mom? I have no idea. And so my sister, she's on like, I guess Goodreads or something. I'm on Goodreads too, but I don't know where she found this out. But she read like 7,000 pages and she read, like she knows like how much she read. I don't know how much she read. So one of my 2022 intentions is to better track my book club books. So, and the stuff that I read just on my own as well. I was gonna pop in here and say, the thing about cleaning or like organizing, purging, and trying to get a space looking and feeling better is um, I get sidetracked and like, oh, 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 you know, that kind of thing. And so I also have some, sometimes a hard time letting go things because um, I might need it later. <laughs> I probably won't need it later. So then it becomes just a question of what is hoarding <laughs> and what is, you're actually going to use because if I want the space to feel more calm and peaceful, I need to let go of a lot of, a lot of things that I have that I might use someday. So if the struggle, if you, if you do that too, the struggle is real with you too, then give this video a thumbs up. Make me feel better. Okay. So now I'm going to show you this area and this, these two bins here are my upcoming projects, so it's kind of like a sneak peek at what's to come in 2022. And then these two hold the cat litter. I told you guys about that before I use the pine pellets. And here is my vinyl. And then I have some houses down here. These are future projects over here. Up here I have the map and I put the little pins in the places that we visited. I need to make sure that's updated because there are several pins missing. And I want to put a little sign on top that says, oh, the places will go. And so I'm going to be making that in 2022. Lisa, how many places do you want to try to visit in 2022? I don't, you know, I love to travel and, but I don't really set myself a goal necessarily that way. I do already know that I'm going to be traveling to Washington state in 2022 because um, my daughter Kat's getting married in April. She's already married. We're having her celebration ceremony event. And so that's in April. So I'll be flying up for that. And then in, I usually fly up in April, May, and then I fly up again in October. So I'll be flying again in October. And I know in November, the first week of December, we're gonna be going to Washington DC. So that'll be fun. And then who knows where in between. All right, so in this area, this is the keeping it real part. I didn't really have a space to put this just yet. I did condense it down. I did purge a lot, so that was good that I kind of got rid of some stuff in there. You couldn't really step into the space, but now, now you can. So um, inside here, I have my wing mom stuff at top. I've got beads. I like to sort the beads by size, just so I know kind of how many I have. Here's some of my spray paint. I also have some of my filming stuff, some little extra supplies here. And then I use these little shoe box holders. You can get these at Dollar Tree. You can also get them at Target and everything like that. And I just sort, and then I just use my little label maker to tell me what's inside. I wanted to give you another example of things that I kept to craft with. I might use them someday and it's not necessary to keep them because first of all, the items that I'm about to show you, very easily obtained again. Second of all, I just, I need to keep the things that I'm going to be using. I have plans to use and stop just collecting things thinking I might use them in the future, if that makes sense. So here's, here's a perfect example. I have, um, probably these are tuna fish cans. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay. No projects in mind to do that, to do with them, but I have them. And then this little thing. This is Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. The little icing comes in this container and I kept it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so 
<laughs> anyway, that's all going in the recycle. And then this section right here is my kind of gift wrapping, holiday, birthday kind of situation. I've got various cards, so in case I need one, I have one on hand. I've got some gift bags. I'm trying to keep it to the neutral brown or white, so that way I can just kind of jazz them up a little bit. And then on this side is just my um, personal papers and um, future project and just some other supplies. Kind of organized, but also kind of not. How many bags did you purge, Lisa? Like <laughs> bags, donated bags or like, um, I think we were at five or six. And how many bags of trash did you have in here? Um, actually that was only two. Good job. So, not too bad. All right, so in this area, I have a little bowl, and this is the bowl that I put trash in. It's kind of a nod to Rachel Ray. Oh, we love Rachel Ray. <laughs> so, um, when she's cooking, she puts her, like, trash and, you know, scraps and stuff into the bowl. And so that's what I do when I craft. I just use this little bowl for that. Um, I made this little top to that little, what do you call that, a bar stool? Yes. And so, <laughs> the only reason I keep it there is just to hold the bowl. Anyway. This is from Target, and this is from Scentsy. My sister sells it if you want it. Gina, Rush. Anyway, um, so this is from Target, and I bought these little um, cubbyhole things from Target as well. The ones they sell at Dollar Tree are just not as sturdy. Sorry, but um, I love you, Dollar Tree, but they're not as sturdy. So I bought these from Target. I'm not going to label these because they just hold, like, this one holds my twine and stuff. This one down here holds my fabric. This one holds my frames. I know where everything is, so I don't need to really label it or anything. Lisa's problem is that we have four bins all of wood stuff, um, yet she had some of her uh, wood stacking blocks in this one and also in this one and in that one. <laughs> so let's get this organized, okay? <laughs> So yes, craft hoarding is a thing. And like some of the stuff, I'm like, oh, I forgot I had that. And so I'm trying to avoid that in 2022. Yes. And Kat is helping me get organized and purging. We already had to go get a larger trash bag. And a recycle so, bag. And a recycle and bag, bag. And a donation bag. So things are happening. Progress is being made. It feels overwhelming though. So just word to the wise, if you're doing it too, it can get overwhelming. Maybe do it in smaller chunks, but we're just going for it. And then over here is my paint. I have paint, I have paint in here, and I have paint down here in my Mod Podge. And then I just have just my crafting supplies that I use on a regular basis. What's in that corner? This corner it's probably stuff I should have purged more <laughs> that I didn't. Um, it's like backgrounds for flat lays and things like that. Um, this did not get transformed like, wow, I neither did this, but I did purge quite a bit. And so that's always helpful to have a much cleaner, less cluttered, organized space. On this shelf up here, I have another tiered tray and I'm just holding some miscellaneous supplies on it, just kind of making it look kind of cute. And then I have another little container for my paintbrushes and paint um, sponge paintbrushes. And then I made this little thing last year. And underneath it, I have my ribbon. I purged quite a bit of ribbon, y'all, that I just know that I'm not going to use on a regular basis. Here's Kat. Hey. And um, she's going to help me go through the ribbon. So we're doing the ribbon in several different piles. We're doing like everyday ribbon that I would just use for my regular crafts that I Grab do. Grab and go. Yes. And then um, other ribbon that's not necessarily my everyday, but it's not necessarily designated to a holiday. Like seasonal. Yes. And then the seasonal ones, like I have one that says Happy Thanksgiving on it. I don't need to keep that out year round. So I'm gonna put that in a special place in a box for fall crafts, the Christmas ribbon in the Christmas craft box, and then hopefully purge some of these ribbons that I just, I know I'm not gonna use. Yeah. So that's the plan. Let's go. So I'm really trying to streamline and organize this year. So y'all keep me, <laughs> keep me accountable. But some of the new things to the space is this printer here. This is the Epson 2800. I bought this because I want to start making some stickers 
and I needed a good printer to be able to do that. And then underneath here, you're going to see um, I did get a screen printing kit, and I'm going to be learning how to do that this year as well. And um, y'all are going to have fun watching me learn. But also, y'all, I got a Cricut press. What? So I'm going to be able to make like um, t-shirts. I'm going to be able to make towels. I'm going to be able to make quite a bit of things with my Cricut press. So I'm so excited to start using it. And in fact, the first project they have you make is this tote bag with the Cricut logo on it. So anyway, call me a Cricut maker. Is it Cricut or Cricut? It's Cricut. No. Or otherwise I've been pronouncing it wrong, but no, um, I guess, well, die cut, it's a die cut machine, so I guess I could see why people would say cry cut, but I am 99% sure it's cricket. And last but not least, this is my crafting desk, my crafting space, and I just have crafting essentials here, and then I've got some miscellaneous tools in front of me, and then over to my left, I have my cricket and that I've been loving, and then I have just like some miscellaneous stuff that I use when I make my videos. And this is my planning book. I put all my ideas, I sketch them out and kind of put um, notes for myself, and then my calendar so I know when videos are due and what time they're due. And so I'm gonna be doing a video in 2022, early 2022, about my crafting essentials, and I can't wait to share that with y'all as well. So Lisa, what were some of the greatest challenges in this reorganization? Well, um, some of the challenges were like purging and letting go of some things, especially if it was like even a tad bit sentimental because I was like, oh, but this was, and you know, it, it's, it's a memory, but the memory is more in here and in here than it is in the actual piece. And so um, I was also able to pass on some things to some other folks that like to craft. And that's a good feeling as well because I'm not using the items, they're going to be using the items, so it's a blessing to someone else. And what's one of the greatest joys from getting to redo your craft room? I enjoy a much cleaner, calmer space. I know that some crafters really like it when they have just like lots of inspiration around them and surrounding them and stuff like that. I'm not that person. I like it to be clean, calm, organized. Um, that's why I chose gray for my house because it's just a very neutral, calming color. Um, you're not going to find a whole lot of, uh, bright colors in the things that I do, um, unless the season calls for it. So, um, just having a calm, organized, peaceful workspace, creative space just makes me happy. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for filming for me, Kat. I really appreciate it. And don't forget y'all, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's our great house, but just don't follow me in real life though. Cause that's creepy. Bye.